Hello, everyone, and welcome to our next session of our Facebook Live mini series. In this series, we've been having conversations with our partners from around the world, talking about the project and incredible work that they've been doing during this coronavirus pandemic, uh, which, by the way, they do amazing work also before this pandemic, but we're trying to learn together uh, from the lessons learned and really how they can share tips and tools for us and the rest of the world, and we can learn from each other. That is part of the power of our community. My name is Tova Gaur, and I oversee global partnerships and sponsorships here at Good Deeds Day. Today, I'm speaking with Alex Waluka. I hope I said that correctly. Probably not, but I try. <laughs> From uh, the Charity Center for Children and Youth Development in Zambia. Welcome, Alex. We're excited to have you here today. Um, thank you so much, uh, Tova. Um, I'm happy to uh, for hosting me today. So, um, Alex, I know from our side on Good Deeds Day, I've been following the work that you've been doing and it's been very inspiring and very impressive. And I'm excited that you can be with us here today to share what you're doing. Before we get started in our conversation, I wanna remind everybody, we love hearing where you're listening in, in from today. So feel free to write down in the comments where you're from, where you're listening from. Uh, we always like to know and it helps us feel part of the global community that we are at. So let's get started. So Alex, why don't you share with me a little bit about the work that you are, who you are, what the organization you work for is, uh, and what you do. Um, my name is Alex Walker. I'm the founder and the executive director of Charity Center for Children and Youth Development. This is an organization that was um, established in 2005 in Zambia to help the less privileged children who like the basic education uh, so that they become the responsible citizens of our country and the world. So as a Charit Center for Children and Youth Development, uh, we have been uh, implementing different activities for uh, to meet the welfare of the people in need in our societies, such as providing the basic education, skills development, micro entrepreneurship, HIV age education, all this uh, which aims at improving the livelihood of the people uh, in our communities. But um, with uh, the, 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 the breakout of the pandemic, we, we have to make adjustment to most of our programs to make sure that we also respond to uh, the corona virus, which has affected the, our country and the world over. So this basically, uh, that's uh, uh, about Charity Center for uh, Children and Youth Development. We are based in um, the northwestern uh, part of Zambia, and Sulawesi in particular. Very nice. And so what is the situation in Zambia right now? Well, the situation in Zambia, um, like we have not had the, like the full lockdown. We have had uh, the, the, the partial lockdown. But we are still recording new uh, COVID cases. Um, but schools, more especially the, 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 the examination classes, have opened for grade seven, grade nine, and grade 12. They have started going to school, but also observing the health guidelines and making sure that every child who is attending school, they are provided with a face mask and also observe other um, healthy uh, guidelines to make sure that mm -hmm. we don't spread the uh, coronavirus among the school pupils. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the classes remain closed. Right. So can you share with me how, um, how this situation has affected the work that you're doing and the changes that you've made to adapt to the situation? Well, uh, thank you so much. You know, um, COVID-19 uh, caught every organization, every institution unaware. And uh, people planned different programs from 2019 coming to 2020. And all of a the sudden, the world came to a standstill. All our programs uh, were affected. So as a shared center for children and youth development, we did not just fold our hands to say, wow, now we are affected by a coronavirus. We had to look at how do we fit in, how do we respond to uh, the, the, the virus in terms of continue providing the service to uh, the people in our communities. 
and also trying to make sure that as frontliners, we're not also affected by the same virus because you can be providing the service, but in the due process, if you're not careful, you, you can also make, uh, make, uh, the, transmit the virus. So what we, 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 we did uh, is that we had to sit down and reprogram our activities to make sure that we, we, re, we respond to, to, to the virus. We started providing after the, the, the government closed the schools. After the government closed the schools, when many children had no access to, um, for example, the virtual learning, when the free internet, where a student comes, has an assignment, wants to engage the lecture. We provide the computer, uh, we provide the laptop, the student will sit on the laptop, interact with the, the, the tutors free of charge so that they continue their academic work. Because though the, 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 the government, for example, in Zambia, introduced uh, uh, the, the, the e-learning and virtual learning via the television and other um, electronic devices, one challenge that we have more especially with children coming from rural background is that they don't have the money not even to buy airtime uh, for so by coming in as an organization to provide the free internet it helped the children who has such challenges to access uh, the, 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 the programs and also do the research on the internet for their academic work. And um, in the due process, uh, uh, some few, a few a months ago, we engaged uh, NES for us, who also came in with their tutors. And we came uh, to get in touch through the, 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 this similar interview which you had with, the, with Nestor's for, uh, for us in, from, from Washington. And we said, oh, we can come together. And that's how uh, we came into, and they started also teaching classes. And as an organization, we had to mobilize children. Well, they started providing that service, even for children in lower, lower, lower classes. And not only that, the Wait other, one second, uh, Alex. Yeah. Alex, I just want to stop you for a minute before you continue and share more. Is what, what I really want people to hear here is you did something that is actually part of our hope. Is you listened to the interview of, of Nest for Us and you said, "Wait a second, they ha they've created this opportunity of volunteering that we can take advantage of. We can work together, right, to make this happen." And you reached out to them, and I was I was extremely delighted and pleased when I heard that you were working together. And so that is a great example of how we can use our network, right, and use our power, our global power, to work together and help meet different needs. So I'm, I'm very excited that that partnership is happening. So continue, go on. Okay, thank you so much. Um, uh, besides the uh, provision of the free internet, we also made sure that we respond to the immediate needs um, of the, 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 the vulnerable people in terms of providing food. We have supported persons with disabilities um, uh, distributing food um, that inform many meal and, and maize. Why we targeted the persons with disabilities? We looked at these are our colleagues that are confined in their homes. Imagine able-bodied people are affected hardly, and they are locked down in their homes and they are confined in their homes. Now imagine somebody who is already confined on a wheelchair and they can't even go out, they can't even go at the market. So we, we realized that these are the people that need immediate intervention. So we had to make sure that we distributed how abundant food in uh, the households that are headed by persons with disabilities. And also we list out to uh, the aged. These are also the most vulnerable people in our society. 
So we also reach uh, um, to over 20 families of um, um, the aged people in the, in Solwezi. And these are some of the, 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 the interventions that we, we have implemented. But we also looked at uh, the long-term intervention because we realized that um, the provision, for example, of food, this is temporary. This is an immediate, uh, a short-term intervention. But we also started looking at um, uh, the long-term solution because coronavirus is not ending tomorrow because we have not yet found a cure. And as an organization, we looked at um, introducing the micro um, loan or in society. So how does this work? So what we are doing now is to engage um, individuals that are doing small businesses at their backyard, at, 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 at their homes, maybe at the, by the roadside, to try to help them how do they start recovering from the effects of the COVID-19 in terms of giving them the startup capital. Like some just need the two, uh, maybe $20, so they just need a $50 for them to, to start. Um, like a small business even by the roadside, so that they continue providing education and the health uh, care for their families. Because as much as we want to help our people with food, for right example, it's, it's not sustainable. We cannot continue providing them food because no one is willing to continue donating money for food. Everyone is planning to see how do, people, how do we help people to help themselves. And we realize as an organization that the micro entrepreneurship is very cardinal in terms of promoting self-reliance. And we have introduced the, uh, a social fund uh, that will pass on from one person to the other. When this person, we give them money for, for a month, they will sell with their small business, and then after the other month, we get the money, give another person, so that that money, it will help people and it will continue revolving until we reach out the many people within our communities. And it will help the people to generate income, which they must have lost during the lockdown of our country, and then get on their feet and start moving without our direct intervention as an organization in terms of providing food because mm -hmm. we have helped them to empower that woman you know people say when you empower a woman you have empowered the whole the whole community because i've been brought up by a woman when my mother my father was nowhere to be seen so i understand the importance of improving the the welfare of the vulnerable women because Women, whether we like it or not, they are managers in the homes. They are the people that know we have no mini meal, we have no work. And our target to look at the woman is because in an African setter, a man dominates with decision making, but not with the household management. The woman manages the home. And that is the reason why we are reaching out to women in terms of providing them with the, the knowledge on how to manage their small income how to manage their food in terms of um, providing the farmers business simulation to make sure that people take care of their food and then they utilize the little income that they have. So uh, basically those are some of the, 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 the activities. The other activity that we have been doing is working with the local authorities in terms of disinfecting public places, doing public cleaning, in markets and also in the uh, rural health centers, make sure that we also uh, keep our environment health green um, um, for um, um, sustainable uh, living in our societies. Mm -hmm. So I want to take a step back before the the cleaning, which I think is is important and, and needed. Is I think one of the important things that you mentioned, you know, before is really this idea of we need to teach the community. It's not just about giving, uh, it's part, you know, we need to give an immediate response, right? Because people need food, because the reality that we are in in lockdown is that they don't have the ability to get it. But thinking long term, right? How do we as organizations deal with the immediate need, but also think long term, right? I think that you, I agree with you very much that 
um, the situation that we were in, right, this whole coronavirus, it's not over. It's not, we're just in the middle of it and we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what the future is going to hold. I think it's clear, at least it's clear to me, um, that this is going to take a while until we go back to normal, whatever normal is anymore. <laughs> um, but but teaching, teaching our people, right, as, as volunteer organizations, that our mission is to help, right? How can we best help? And, and the most powerful way of helping is teaching them to help themselves, right? Helping them grow. And when we help them grow, right, your, your organization deals with, with raising youth, right? Youth and children and supporting them. And if they see their parents, right, learning to be sustainable, then they, that is their model, right? This is how, who I should be too, right? What is the business that I can run when I grow up? Right? How do I care for my family? Uh, which is, I think is a very, very powerful message. And I encourage everybody listening to think about how does this apply in my own volunteer organization? Right? What are the things that we can do to help the people that we serve learn to serve themselves right? and take care of their needs? How can we do that? Exactly. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you are very right because you know that's why within our limited resources we need to uh, make sure that um, we our planning is not entirely on short-term measures right and let's also not just look at for example when we have a one thousand dollar let's not just look at what let's help one thousand people numbers sometimes deceives Let's look at, I, we have a, a $1,000. How do we make sure that we meet the immediate needs and also continue surviving after tomorrow? And this is the programming that most of us community-based organization must be looking forward to because you can take care of today, but make sure there will be also tomorrow. So we need to start mm -hmm. thinking um, how do we implement the sustainable development? Because sometimes, how do we make sure that as we help the people, we are also defeating the dependence syndrome right. so that we calculate the knowledge and skills of self-reliance, teaching people how to catch fish and not just how to eat fish. Because when they learn out of the fish tomorrow, they know where to go and cast their nets. And this is something that we are encouraging our uh, fellow volunteers, uh, community readers, in, including government, to say, let's start planning for the future. Because as you have really uh, rightly reported, COVID-19 or coronavirus is, it will be with it for a while. And the new normal pronounced because there are issues to do with the cultural, there are issues to do with religion. Like I'm having challenges, for example, in my communities. When you go out to say, you just greet somebody at a distance and give a distance, you feel like it sounds, it looks so weird. But it, you need to start thinking, how do people accept it and move on with their lives as part of their lives? So these are some of the programs that we, we are encouraging, including all you uh, colleagues that are listening to this interview, to make sure that let's not pre, be preoccupied with immediate needs. We can reach out to thousands of people with uh, food packs and other things. But let's also think of the donor who has given us today may not give us tomorrow. So let's look at if someone has given us $50 today, how do we make part of that $50 we save for tomorrow? So these are some of the messages that we need to encourage the people, like in communities, as families, they can come together, start putting small coins as a family in one basket, something that can help them. There is a concept that is, we have, which is called
or did they continue uh, Wait, surviving Alex, with their Alex, own little Alex, income? Alex, can I stop you? Because I you got stuck. I want to make sure it doesn't get stuck in the interview. Again, you, you started saying there's a concept that's called, that's where I lost you. Yeah, the, the, the concept called uh, village banking. This is oh, okay. a community savings. These are community savings schemes mm -hmm. where, which we are also encouraging as an organization. So the, the, the community village schemes, what I was explaining is that this is where you uh, train the people, you teach them on mm -hmm. how to lend, um, uh, come together, for example, put their money together, and then they start borrowing you with interest from their own money, of which oh, now amazing. after, yeah. And then after one, So um, I think the profits from their investment. I think you are freezing. So this this is one yeah. one way of helping people to help themselves with their own resources. Right, which I think is amazing. Right, it's not. It's saying you know don't let's let's use what we get from the outside, but let's not rely on that. Let's start creating mechanisms to rely on ourselves. Right, and figure out how ourselves. I mean you. You know, and when we, we were preparing for this interview, you said a, a sentence that that really made me think, right? Which was, you know, on the one hand, kids who don't have food can't, doesn't matter that they have a laptop, right? You can't, they're not going to be able to learn if their stomach is not full. So on the one hand, we, we do need to meet that immediate need because right now we're in an immediate crisis. But if we can teach, we can create a system, right, where that we're, 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 you know, creating businesses and creating funds where they're always going to be full, then that's not going to be an issue anymore, right? But if I'm only waiting to get a donation so I can feed the, the child, then what happens if tomorrow I don't get that money, right? Okay. Then I have a, a child with a laptop, but a child that's hungry who can't really learn. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. So the 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 other um, um, advice that um, I I can give more especially to our colleagues the, um, to all, to all of us is that uh, we need to take advantage of the current situation and uh, try to reach out um, or mobilize resources through crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. I know many people have said, you know, crowdfunding is, is not a good idea, but of course it's, it, it depends with the platforms that you are using in terms of mobilizing resources. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. time, most of the donors, for example, you write a proposal, they tell they have diverted their attention to particular regions and uh, countries. But as organization, the other thing that we have done as, um, as Charity uh, Center for Children and Youth Development was to set up uh, online uh, donation campaign. As of yesterday, uh, we we raised um, nine hundred and seventy dollars. Nine hundred and seventy dollars. So it means in few days we may have a one thousand dollars. So as we are writing proposals and whatever to uh, uh, do our services, we need also to make sure that. Um, we take advances with the current technological advancement. Uh, set up the online. People with more dollars, they can put in a $10, they can put on a $20, they can, on, can put on a $50. For a month or two, you'll be able also to uh, collect something that you are able to supplement your efforts in terms of uh, mm -hmm. continue providing the humanitarian services during this uh, the, the pandemic. So these are some of the interventions that we really need to make sure that uh, we don't uh, depend on one source. We need to create various streams that when this one stream dries out, we are able to rely on the other. Of course, we let's not depend on one way in terms of resource mobilization. Another aspect that I wanted to look at, because I know most of us small organizations, if there's a biggest challenge that we have is on the resource mobilization. Because everyone you reach out to will tell you we have no money, we could not do this because we have no money. Because 
everyone has kept their dollar because they don't know what happens tomorrow. But we can utilize the crowdfunding as what we are doing to make sure that it supplements all our efforts to meet the effects of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think, I think that what you're saying is very valuable for people, right, is remembering even if you have a big funder, let's say, for your organization, we don't know what will happen tomorrow. It's a dynamic world that we live in. And so being able to diversify and, and, and making sure that you're not dependent on one organization or one stream of income or one way, you know, even if you're government funded, tomorrow the priorities of the government could be different and you will find yourself without funding. And so how do you think creatively using technological advances, using what's out there to really make sure that your organization is supported long term, for sure? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's something we all identify with, right, is how are we going to fund the work that we do, especially these days? Mm, so um, I think that that is... Um, uh, something that we uh, we thought as an organization we really need to make sure that uh, we continue uh, doing what we can but always even as we provide these services we should not forget that our lives are also very important i have a friend of mine who always reminds me from australia she's a very good friend of mine from australia she tells me alex even in the midst of these services help that you are uh, that, that doing in the communities your life also comes first because if you are normal today then the work you are doing becomes meaningless so let's make sure that we protect others and also protect ourselves so that even tomorrow we become relevant to society because we can of course, people are risking their lives, but let's make sure that our efforts do not be jeopardized, compromise our health. We have to continue saving people and protecting our lives so that even tomorrow and the other day and the other year, we continue providing that services. So I've seen in most countries that are affected with coronavirus, doctors are sick, I'm infected with the COVID-19. Nurses have, have died from the COVID-19. So we need to make sure that one, let's not compromise on the health guidelines always. And let's make sure that we remain healthy so that we continue doing good in our communities and in our society. Absolutely. And I, I think that's a great message. And I think that in general, it is particularly true now during this pandemic. But I also think that in general, uh, one of the things that those of us who are in the world of doing good, sometimes we forget to take care of ourselves because we're so passionate. We're so committed to the work that we do that self-care is usually not the thing that we are best at. And I think that um, that is a good message to remind all of us that that by taking care of ourselves, you are allowing yourself to do better work. You can serve the community better when you are taking care of yourselves, right? The pandemic is, has given us a very concrete, right? And very um, clear message, which is if you don't take care of yourself, you may get sick, right? And you might die. But that's true, I think, also when, when we're not dealing with a pandemic. We, need, we have to take care of ourselves in order to take care of others. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Yes. So um, oh, time is going by fast. Are there other, is there anything else important that was important for you to share with us today? Um, well, well, to me, like well, I've, 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 I've explained and I've talked quite a lot, but um, one thing that I just want to say finally is that let's, con let's check on others. Let's check. Um, reach out to others because i was sharing with some people yesterday the meeting that i attended i was invited to attend one of the meetings where they are seeking the global uh, fund mm -hmm. i was telling them sometimes as an organization 
try to reach out to another organization. You may find your weakness is their strength and your strength is their weakness. So that we can you trust, like look at, we came on board, when following this Facebook interview, we had to get in touch with NIS for us. We did our local mobilization and organization to reach out to the students and they have connected the student, individual students to um, different international tutors. One, it exposes the little children in Zambia to start interacting with the, uh, the international tutors. Secondly, it helps to promote culture exchange even when they have not uh, um, uh, physically met. So let's always try to reach out. What do you do? How, learn from others. Don't be content with what you know. Don't be content with what you do. Make sure that if you hear about us, what, whatever we are discussing here, reach out to us. Like one thing that I've, uh, like in my country, in communities, people learn organizations like it's a competition, or oh, they're doing better than us. Oh, no, 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 we just complement because the responsibility to provide the services to the general populace is in the hands of the government. But we come in as organizations to supplement those efforts to make sure that no one uh, is left behind. So let's reach out where you have challenges reach out to another organization to another reader to another individual that your challenges must be within your reach you might be struggling but your solution is just at your neighbor reach out to others with good message and they'll reach out to you always let's um, learn to be relevant to society and some learn more even from the people we are helping than always pretending to know everything. There are situations where we think the people we are helping, they only need our services. But there are certain things that we, we can tap in from the people that we think have nothing to contribute to society. So always, as I'm, uh, my, my message is that where you have challenges, reach out to your neighbors, reach out to other organizations within or outside your country they might just build you and build your weaknesses so that you can reach out to a lot of people don't be confined don't be content with what you know or what you have and that's my last message that is a beautiful beautiful way to to end this interview because that is our hope because we all have our strengths and we all have our weaknesses and if we learn to work together and learn from each other that is where we all get better and remember now if you're listening to us and you're struggling and you're feeling that things are hard remember that you not only can learn from others but you also have what to teach we all have what to teach and you know uh, somebody smart sent to, said to me a long time ago said there's enough room in this world for all of us right we don't have to be in competition there's enough room for all of us and if it, instead of trying to knock each other down we actually lift each other up and support each other, we will all do better. Everybody will gain from that. So thank you for leaving us with that beautiful message for, for our conversation today. I, I appreciate the work that you're doing. I know that it is affecting many. Uh, I appreciate the vision that you have um, for Zambia and for your community. And, and thank you very much for spending time with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I appreciate for hosting me. Thank you. So. Uh, we want to invite you, um, first of all, before I, I, I tell us about our next Facebook Live, take Alex's um, advice, first of all, and reach out to one another. I can already think in my mind of at least five people who would benefit from talking to you, Alex, and learning from, from what you shared with us today. So I hope that if you're listening, you take advantage. Uh, and I want to invite you to our next episode, which will be uh, on next Tuesday at 9 a.m. Mexico time, which is 10 a.m. Eastern time, where we're going to be meeting with Renan. Ozover from Fire, Firefish, who is, um, which is basically a company that deals with social media and technology. And he's going to be giving us a lesson on how to set up a successful social media campaign. Uh, so make sure to bring your notebooks and get ready to learn. This is going to be more of a learning session uh, and less of an interview session. So get ready to learn. Uh, thank you very much for being with us as always. Um, Many blessings from all of us at the team of Good Deeds Day. So stay home and stay safe or be careful wherever you are. If you're back and out about 
uh, in the world. And we will see you again on our on Tuesday. Bye, everybody.